Hey, this is Peter from the Ultimate WordPress Guide, and in this video, I'll show you how to create this very cool glass morphism or frosted glass effect using only Elementor and some very simple CSS. Note, to add custom CSS, you'll need to have Elementor Pro installed. So let's get started. First, I'll go and create a new section. I'll use a very simple three column layout and I'll set the view height to 100% so that it fills the screen. Next, I'll add my background image. I already have an image in my library. Very cool little island layout. I'll set the position to center center. The attachment to scroll so that the image will scroll with the page. I'll set it to no repeat and I'll set the size to cover. Okay, so now you can see I've got three columns in the middle of the page. I'm not going to create all of them. I'll only use the middle column and then we'll duplicate afterwards. So I'll start by creating an inner section. I'll delete the additional column as we'll only need the one. I'll go and add just a background color to this so you can see this. I'll change that to solid white and I'll add a small padding of 20 pixels. Now you won't see the padding at the moment since there are no elements currently within this column but as we start adding elements you'll see how the, the padding gets affected. All right so we'll go and I'll add a few elements. So I'll start off with a icon. I'll add a heading element and I'll just duplicate that since I'll need two. Next I'll add just a normal text section and then lastly I'll go ahead and add the button. Okay, there we go. So I think we've got all the elements that we need to get started. So let's get cracking on styling this. All right, so I'll go ahead and just to start with, I'll set the background transparency. I'll drag the opacity down a little bit. Yeah, so you can see already where we're going with this. I'll just leave that there for now. We'll go and adjust it later. I'll start at the top with the icon element. I'll go and replace that with an SVG that I have in my library. I'll insert and then I'll just go and style, adjust that. Let's say make that about 120 pixels. That's fine. Next, I'll go over to the heading. I'll change that value to a 01. Here, I'll change that to say option one. And I'll align both of these to the right hand side. Next, I'll go back to the first heading element and in the style section, I also want to change the text color to white. And here again, I'll drag the opacity all the way down. Again, and set the typography to, let's say, about, uh, let's make that 120 pixels. And to overlap these two texts, the option one and the zero one, I'll go into the advanced section. I'll unlink the values there. I'll just add a bottom margin of negative 50. That'll just drag the text in of the heading underneath the second one. I'll go on to the option one text styling. Here I want to change the typography. I'm going to change that to Bevis New. The text size, let's make that 40. I think that looks good. I'll set the text color to bright white. That's fine. And I'll go over to the text editor. I'll do the same. I'll set the text to white. Here I'll set the typography to Montserrat. I'll give that a text size of 16 and let's add a weight of say 500 pixels. I think that's perfect. Next over to the button. In the content section under the text I want to change that to say learn more. Okay under the styling I want to change the width of the button. I know that in this instance the button is about 320 pixels. I'll change the typography here again. I'll select Bevis New. Let's give that a font size of maybe 20. Yep, that's perfect. Now I'll set the normal and the hover state, so both the text color and the background type of the button. So on the normal state, I'd like the button text to be black on a white background 
and on the hover state I'll invert that so we'll give it white text on a black background. I'm not going to set a border type in this instance but I do want to add a border radius so I'll add a border radius here of about 20 maybe 25 pixels I think that looks good and you can see the black on white hover effect um, and that looks pretty good I think. So going back to the inner section the column that we have there I just want to go ahead and now make the final adjustments to the color so you'll see that I'm just giving it a bit more of a, a glassy effect a bit more transparent it makes the the white on top of it also pop out a bit more and I think that looks good on the border area I'm gonna add a border radius here as well I'll make that just a, a 15 border radius you can see the border radius on the edges but here I also want to add a solid border but I don't want to see the border all the way around I just want to have a single you know, one pixel weight border on the left and on the top so I'll go and unlink the values I'll add a value one for the top, one for the left. There you can see the border, but it's still very dark. So we'll go back and we'll change the border color to white also. And here again, I'll just drag that opacity down. Okay, so there you can see that, that faint little white border. Okay, so next is where the magic happens. This is where we add the custom CSS. Um, to the element to really give us that uh, morphism or frosted glass effect so I'll go back into the column I'll go to the advanced settings and I'll go down to custom CSS and very simply here we'll use the the backdrop filter property so I'll start by just prompting my selector add my open and close curly braces and I'll call up the backdrop filter I want to set it to a blur and I want to give it a value of initially five pixels. So immediately as I've done that, you can see it creates that great glass morphism effect. And obviously I can tone the blur intensity down or up, whichever one I choose. But I think uh, a good number four looks, uh, looks pretty good there. I'll go ahead and just save my work. So now that I've done the one that I want, I think a, a cool little motion effect to this would, uh, would add a great touch. So I'll go again over to the column, I'll go to the advanced settings under motion effects, I'll go to the mouse effect section, I'll add that on and I'll add the 3D tilt. So you can see that adds this 3D tilting effect as it follows the mouse. This is a little aggressive so I'll tone that down just a little bit, maybe bring that down to about 1.4 pixels. That looks a lot smoother, a lot more realistic. I'm happy with that. I'll go ahead, update changes. And the last thing to do is to get rid of the additional columns that I have um, and just replace them with the one that I've just created. So I'll go and delete the column on the left, I'll delete the column on the right, and then I'll just go ahead and duplicate this twice. Okay, you'll see that the SVG images on these two have disappeared. So I'll just go back and upload the new SVGs for the other two options. And same on the third card, palm tree. And then the 010203 in options, I'll go ahead and change that as well. So we'll change that to, to let's make that option two. and option three and I think that looks pretty good that's all I have for you today I hope you enjoyed this video if you found it useful or helpful please let us know I've put a few links to tools services and plugins that I use in the description below these are affiliate links if you purchase a product through one of them I'll receive a commission at no additional cost to you of course I only endorse products that I've personally used and your support helps me put out more great content. So thanks. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications and stay tuned for more great content. Bye for now.